What up gunslingers, you already know it's Gary7MT for the GTA series videos crew, and we back on. After weeks of teasing in which Rockstar Games released artwork, images, character details, and locations from Red Dead Redemption 2, as well as firing off the first info on Red Dead Online, we have finally reached the day when selected worldwide journalists have received the green light to publish their previews of the game. All links to the previews can be found in the description if you're interested in reading. And of course, as always, big thanks must go out to the staff and users on GTA forums for their help in translating and summarizing the international previews into English. With that out of the way, let's get into this video's goodies, starting with those hands-on previews. Rockstar invited journalists in various worldwide locations to first see, then play Red Dead Redemption 2 for a couple of hours on the PlayStation 4 Pro in 4K with active HDR. To cross off one question immediately, technically speaking, it's unknown if the game runs native in 4K or if it uses checkerboard rendering to upscale it to that resolution. By the way, the game runs pretty solid at 30 FPS, and the scale is simply humongous when the player opens the entire map completely after the introduction chapter. Now as we understand it, the first part of the demo that was shown to journalists was from the beginning of the game. We find the gang in a shack on Mount Hagen, a snowy area in the Grizzlies, northwest of Amberino. The outlaws are licking their wounds after a huge debacle suffered while trying to rob the bank of Blackwater. Some members were killed, others are seriously wounded, one of which is John Marston. To regain their balance, swagger, and funds needed to get the wounded the medical attention they require, Dutch decides to attack an armored train with Arthur and the rest. Listen to me, we don't want to kill any of you, but trust me, we will. Wake them up a little! The plan was to blow up the rails, but the detonator failed and the player has to use the horse to reach the train and board it, kill all enemies on board, and collect the reward. The train's interiors overflow with glorious details, and each object can be analyzed like in L.A. Noir. Before the end of the mission, players are forced to decide between keeping the hostages alive and possibly having more problems to deal with later, or kill them all, leaving no witnesses. Before the choice could be made, the demo ended, leaving no opportunity to prep out any more of the game from that point, but permitted Rockstar programmers to jump to a different place in the game. Before moving on with the demo, Rockstar told those fortunate reviewers Red Dead Redemption 2 can be played entirely in first person or third person, and like in GTA 5, you can go one view to the other anytime. Plus, to have an even better view from the saddle, in first person players can remove the horse's head. According to almost every journalist, Red Dead Redemption 2 is Rockstar Games' most ambitious project with the densest, most cohesive and immersive open world they've ever played or even seen. The cameras have three different zoom levels to allow players to see even more of the world encompassing them, with an additional new cinematic camera which pulls the camera back to a widescreen view and shows action from more dramatic angles. As great as the game seems, it's not without flaws. The pace is definitely slow and some game mechanics are hard to get down pat. Still, according to VG247, Red Dead Redemption looked phenomenal at the time of release but seems barren and somewhat flat in comparison to RDR2's world. This isn't the first time we've heard negative comments on game pace. A few weeks ago, GameStop employees got an extended look at Red Dead Redemption 2, and some claimed the boring presentation put them to sleep. To be fair and keep things in perspective, remember most of them are not real gamers or professional reviewers. Such was pretty much the experience all the journalists had at the beginning of the meeting. Afterwards, they got to play the game on their own for 90 minutes or so, under Rockstar supervision, of course. They all started near the city of Valentine. Here's more or less what they discovered. This place ain't no such thing as civilized. Like its predecessor, the HUD is minimal by default, showing only the mini-map with meters that fade in when necessary. The option to permanently expand the HUD and enlarge the mini-map meters is there if you want it, or you can turn everything off. Current time and temperature, by the way, display when pausing the game or pressing the D-pad. By default, walking only shows the mini-map, while being on horseback instead shows two icons that identify the status of our horse. During shootouts, we see all the indicators related to Morgan. If you move the cursor around while watching the world map, you'll hear a wind sound to indicate your movement. 
On the upside, gameplay feels fluid and natural. NPC animations, Arthur's movement, shooting and combat animations all flow effortlessly. The melee has been redone from scratch, and when the bounty hunters come after you, they don't want you captured, they want you dead. The game's cinematic camera can be turned on anytime, and if the heads-up display is turned off at the same time, you can enjoy some beautiful sights. And you can also switch between various angles. When riding with other game members, holding down X while in cinematic mode ensures you all ride at the same pace as a pack. The physics of weather are completely simulated into the game world. Rain and snow accumulate naturally when terrain is soft in footprints and falls off trees appropriately. As wind blows, snow interacts naturally with trees, horses, and people. Rockstar insists each tree is placed individually on the map. Some missions will take you far into the mountains, literally above the cloud line, aka the game's weather system. Because the game is set before the era of modern cities, light pollution isn't an issue, so at night, the sky is quite visible and riddled with clusters of stars and looks like an array of galaxies when you look up. Red Dead Redemption 2 isn't the story of a single character as much as it's the story of an entire gang seen through the eyes of Arthur Morgan. Dutch is boss of said gang and father figure for Arthur as he saved him and gave the young man a new life. Something similar happened to young John Marston, who has since grown into one of Dutch's most violent and aggressively loyal disciples who, by the way, according to Game Informer, might not be the most well-liked member of the gang. Rockstar revealed the entire gang a few weeks ago by releasing 23 different images, one for each member, starting with Dutch van der Lind, leader of the group, Jose, master con artist and Dutch's closest friend, Molly O'Shea, Dutch's object of affection, Susan Grimshaw, undisputed boss and arbiter of justice in the camp. Pearson, butcher and cook. Micah Bell, a career criminal and hitman. Charles Smith, quiet, reserved and unbeatable in a fight. Bill Williamson, ex-soldier discharged from the army and known figure to fans of the series. Leopold Strauss, responsible for keeping the gang's books and running their money lending operation. John Marston, Abigail Roberts, and the Little Jack Marston, three characters we almost know everything about. Karen Jones, consummate scam artist and trigger woman. Javier Escuela, a Mexican revolutionary and notorious bounty hunter. Tilly Jackson, an outlaw from the age of 12. Savvy, resilient, and dependable. Uncle, part of the group only because he's so entertaining. Mary Beth Gaskill, a good-natured young woman and the perfect criminal. Lenny Summers, on the run since he was 15, smart, competent, and ambitious. Josiah Trelawney, a flamboyant conjurer, con man, and trickster. A more criminal version of Nigel West Dickens, more than the strange man. Reverend Swanson, an ex-clergyman lost to debauchery. Sean McGuire, a cocky young Irish thief and stick-up man. And Sadie Adler, a widow with only one mission, to get revenge on those who killed her husband. Last, obviously, is Arthur, Dutch's most dependable and capable enforcer, a man who gets the job done. Arthur has three main skills and four side ones. The main ones are health, stamina, and the dead eye. The side ones are strength, dexterity, instinct, and grit. He can swim, but not very well. This sounds unclear, so it is possible that his stamina or other stats negatively affect his swimming ability. He reacts to the weather by changing his posture in the rain to avoid getting wet. Thunderstorms are confirmed, too, so you may want to dress for that if you know one's coming. Snow on Arthur's clothing will eventually melt. Mud will harden and wipe away. Blood will dry. Taking baths will remove the filth from Arthur's body and clothes. You can pull down your bandana by assessing the face mask option on the item wheel and wear every piece of clothing as individual pieces. Preset outfits do exist, of course, but clothing can be mixed and matched, like in GTA V. So it's the complete opposite of the original where you only had outfits. Thick clothing helps you in the grizzlies, but in the desert, you might want to take a layer or two off. You can wear animal carcasses as a hat, and if Arthur loses his hat or his weapon gets shot from his hand, they will reappear in his horse's inventory. If the saddle gets lost, it will reappear at the stable. If Arthur swaps his hat for one, say, he finds on the ground or shoots off an enemy's head, what happens to his original hat is unknown. Arthur's hair and beard grow naturally according to in-game time, and shaving is, if not entirely manual, certainly close to it. 
Barbershops unlock at some point during the game, and when it comes to manual shaving, think custom beards. It's implied you can create something unique. Hairstyle can only be altered at the barbershop, and unlike GTA, you can't give Arthur more hair on his head and face during customization. Only less. You can, however, increase the speed your hair and facial hair grows with a tonic you can buy in a store. Like in GTA San Andreas, players have to take care of their character's health. In other words, Arthur needs to eat and sleep. Depriving him of food and rest inhibits health regeneration and stamina, leaving poor Arthur dizzy and with blurry vision. Depending on how much you eat, you can also gain or lose weight. Rockstar stresses that the eat-sleep mechanics aren't meant to be annoying or intrusive, but to remind players that Arthur is a person and needs to look after himself. I want you to use that gizmo you acquired but you gotta lose some of that ballast first, badass. Hurry! We've only got a short window for this one. The horse's stats are shown in a very small interface and can be improved by things like running, but also diminished by hardship. You can name your horse in the game, a feature probably in Red Dead Online as well, but this is unconfirmed. We can fortify the bond with our horse by grooming and feeding him. Having a good relationship with the horse will allow you to do things like sudden skidding turns to dodge danger at the last second, as well as just sticking to the path better. The actions that increase horse bond are feeding, grooming, petting, and riding. Petting your horse increases your bond the most. Moreover, horses come in 19 different breeds, from Appaloosas and Arabians to Shires and Mustangs, each of which handles differently with its own defined set of characteristics. Horses can be captured out in the wild and broken, purchased from stables, or, of course, acquired by more underhanded means. At the stable, you can also purchase provisions to keep your horse fed, tonics that give your four-footed friend temporary health, stamina boosts, and more. When idle, horses will snap at flies, move their ears around if they hear something, and drop turds. If it is a male, his testicles tighten and drop according to temperature. Your horse will slow if he falls in mud, but his speed will gradually return to normal as it falls from his feet. Or you can just jump in a river to wash it off. Then again, you can simply groom it off. Tons of extras are available for customizing your horse, with 59 different coat styles and a huge range of customizable tack, including saddles, horns, stirrups, spurs, and saddlebags. You can create a horse that is truly your own, developing a personal and unique relationship as you explore the world together. You can braid its tail or cut its mane. If your horse trusts you, you can teach it tricks and move around him with no worries. Don't move behind him if you haven't bonded yet or he might kick your ass. And no, you can't kill your horse by shooting it. If you fatally injure your horse, you can revive it with some special kit. If you don't have one, you have to get one before your horse bleeds out. If you don't make it, your horse is gone, permanently. It can also lose control, hit a tree or some other object and knock you out of the saddle. Leaving your horse too far behind means he could get lost forever unless you go back to him. Your whistle has a range and can be improved again by bonding with your four-legged friend. Holding the triangle button makes Arthur dismount the horse and tie his reins to a stake, or you can untie it and walk alongside. Horses, by the way, are not the only way to move around the world. You can also use trains or upgrade Dutch's tent to unlock a map that gives you the ability from your tent to access any settlement you've previously visited, showing a cutscene of you riding there. You can also sleep and change your clothes in your tent or spend nights in hotels. As we said before, the demo started on a hillside with mountains in a distance Rockstar said wasn't the edge of the map. The world is huge and split into five states, Amberino, Lemoyne, New Hanover, New Austin, and West Elizabeth, with the last two also appearing in the first Red Dead Redemption. In New Hanover, we have the area of the Heartlands with the city of Valentine, a raucous, rough and tumble town that attracts traders, ranchers, cowboys, gamblers, outlaws, and loose women from far and wide, all looking to make some money, raise some hell, and have a good time. This is one of the very first places we visit in the game, according to the previews. Another area is Roanoke Ridge, where we can find Ansburg, a city for miners and their families, which has been providing coal up and down the Lanahatchee River for almost a century. Another name that became familiar from the hands-on preview is Mount Hagen, one of the better-known peaks of the snowy grizzlies of Amberino. Mount Hagen towers above Lake Isabella to the west and Beartooth Beck to the east, which provides the main pass through the western mountain range and joins with the Dakota River further south. 
Lemoyne is instead inspired by the state of Louisiana with St. Dennis and the Bayou NWA, a key gateway into North America with a trade route that runs the length of the state. The bustling city of St. Dennis is a melting pot of cultures and people where businessmen, socialites, sailors, laborers, beggars, and thieves all live side by side. Impossible to miss is a remote settlement out of the swamps of Bayou NWA called La Grasse. Here people live self-sufficiently for the most part, making a little money here and there from fishing and acting as guides for travelers wishing to navigate the region. Still in Lemoyne, in the area of Scarlet Meadows, we can also find Rhodes, a city which for years has been caught in the crossfire between the Braithwaite's and the Greys, two feuding plantation families. We don't know much about how the region of New Austin and West Elizabeth are different from the one seen in Red Dead Redemption, but we know that in the latter, we'll find Strawberry in the area of Big Valley. The city was little more than a small logging town until the arrival of its new mayor, an East Coast eccentric, who was obsessed with transforming it into a cultural beacon for wealthy tourists, much to the bemusement of the locals. Exactly like in GTA 5, as soon as the introduction ends, the entire map is available with the world map fogged until you uncover it by reaching the area. And from the world, let's move on to the missions. Everything starts with the debacle at Blackwater, where the gang apparently has a big money stash stored somewhere, but it becomes inaccessible after the failed bank heist. The story evolved naturally out of the first Red Dead. A small team had begun writing ideas for the story of Dutch's gang before the first Redemption was even released, and the vagueness of how the gang's history was described in the last game helped. The gang's camp is going to be fundamental. You can have hot drinks near the campfire, and the camp cook makes a new stew every day. You can provide provisions and money to the camp to upgrade it, and that can result in more meaningful conversations with other members of the gang. Helping the camp out will expand the types of activities other members will go on with you and will change the stories told around the campfire. Activities at the camp include fishing, poker, and dominoes. Rockstar stresses that all these activities are optional and that the camp will survive with or without your help. More importantly, you can start stories and secondary missions from there. All of them, whether they're main missions, secondary ones, or just random encounters, are considered important and each is a part of the main storyline. Also at the camp will be missions that will increase our bond with other gang members unlocking more quests and maybe abilities from your companions. Gang members will offer to join you on free roam activities too, by the way, giving you access to the same kind of assistance seen in the story missions, like asking them to go ahead and take out an enemy. But take care of your friends because gang members can be killed, but you can hire new ones throughout the story. During missions, gang members may ask you how to proceed, let you take lead, or ask another member to take lead instead. Orders can be addressed to fellow gang members by pressing L2, for example. We can ask John to kill an enemy, ask Billy or Lenny to scout an enemy camp, or choose what kind of approach to use when assaulting them. You can approach missions stealthily and command members with you to take out enemies. And when doing side missions, you get the option to take John or someone else with you, or leave them at the camp. Story missions initiate time jumps, and cities and states are built and grow as you progress. While approaching specific locations, all characters will talk. These dialogues were recorded twice. Characters will speak normally when riding close and yell when they're further away. Together with the introductory missions, journalists had the opportunity to try some other side missions. In one, by overhearing a private conversation or by secretly following a suspicious man, for example, we come to discover a clandestine activity located in the back of the building housing the city doctor. The doc can be mesmerized by the sparkling reflections of our gun to open the armored door hiding said illegal activities. In another situation, you're giving a camera to capture images of known outlaws for someone. The camera stays in your inventory forever, and you can take pictures of the landscapes or self-portraits with it. Self-portraits don't just show the head and shoulders like modern selfies, but Arthur's whole body. No word on an editor or proper photo mode, at least yet. Mission givers seem to have a yellow dot over their head, visible in the near distance as well, and mission objectives appear as in previous Rockstar games in short sentences at the bottom of your screen, with key words written in yellow. The article mentions various interesting random encounters in free roam. Stranger missions return, but their location is not pinpointed on the map. Instead, you are shown an area to search. In one, a woman had a horse fall on her, breaking her leg and trapping her. You have to pull her out and get her to a doctor. 
In another, a kitchen brawl ensues with a homeowner after you came in uninvited. And while Arthur has no trouble beating up the old man, the owner's dog comes barking from another room. Arthur fires a warning shot to scare the dog and then attempts to escape. Apparently, dogs will always bark at you, thereby alerting enemies and owners, unless you make them friendly by petting them first. Every choice has consequences, so the honor system is back. We can kill hostages during a heist, but we can also leave them alive, opening ourselves up to who knows what consequences. These choices won't affect the game's ending or drastically change the story, but they will influence the system with the game adapting to our actions. Being ruthless will have repercussions on the NPC's opinion of us, and will therefore change their approach to us. Instead of saying hello or ignoring us in passing, they may already have their hands on their guns ready to intervene if we make one false move. You'll also earn more money from robberies and get extra gruesome kill cams. Be a good guy and you'll get more money from bounties, NPCs will treat you better, and your kill cams will be more heroic. Being a black hat will obviously put a bounty on your head. A bounty for low to mid-sized crimes in a city paid $225 during journalist play. Arthur had a bounty placed on his head by accidentally shooting a dog, after which a witness ran to the sheriff, resulting in him asking Arthur to leave town. Arthur obliged, but was moving too slow, which pissed off the sheriff, causing him to open fire. A gunfight began that eventually involves the rest of the town until Arthur ended up surrounded and dead. After respawning, Arthur had bullet holes in his jacket. Depending on Arthur's honor, his killing style would change. An outlaw barbarian will be more inclined to value heinous massacres, while a more respectable gunslinger will tend to wipe out his opponents keeping an eye for their dignity. When you end up with a bounty, you can either pay it off or end up in jail, and sometimes, according to the journalist, a little cutscene can occur in which the gang will free you from jail as shown in the official gameplay trailer. NPC comments on Arthur aren't only based on his actions, but his clothing, face, and anything he may have. Like, they may compliment a nice hunt's kill while riding on his horse, or move away if the carcass is rotten and full of flies. Although they had great facial expressions and animations, the 3D models for secondary characters aren't very well detailed and are missing polygon complexity. Everything you do in the game has an effect on your surroundings, and at some point in the game you will meet someone or hear an NPC talk about an event you witnessed, read about, or were a part of. It's a living, dynamic world. When standing around listening to two NPCs chat about a massacre and curse, they asked Arthur his thoughts on the matter, which Rockstar said wouldn't have happened if Arthur hadn't lingered around in front of them. The key to the game is Arthur's ability to interact with everything in the world and how it, in turn, reacts to him. Use the left trigger to choose how to interact with people around you. By doing so, you'll bring up different interaction options like saying hello, intimidating them, or robbing them. Besides inspecting humans and animals with L2, you can also inspect objects in stores and at gunsmiths. This is especially highlighted in first-person mode. Arthur can take an object in his hand to closely examine it. This is also how you interact with environmental narrative objects like notes and photographs. You can inspect your weapons, which is great for appreciating any customization you've made to them. You can whistle at people to get their attention, but doing so can get you out of breath. You can hold the D-pad while aiming to make Arthur fire a warning shot, which can be used to attract the attention of other characters or startle an animal he's hunting. You can run and jump off trains onto your horse, which follows the train at a gallop. You can drive the train with some of the options when in the main train car, including accelerate, brake, ring bell, and whistle. You can also jump onto passing stagecoaches from your horse. If you choose to sleep and take a bath in hotels, you have to scrub each part of Morgan individually. Sometimes a prostitute will knock on your door, asking you whether she should be helping. Should you accept the visual, will move away from the room only to return after she's done. So, only cold coffee here, gunslingers. As we said before, people and animals are not all you can interact with. Weapons get dirty and clogged up over time, and if you get them wet, they could eventually jam or become unusable. To avoid that and get the best performance, you need to clean and oil them, and you can actually break your enemy's weapons if you shoot them. You can also use the gun oil to restore old and dirty weapons you found in the world to full working order, restoring their damage and other stats to their proper values. 
Guns are rated from 0 to 4 on the following attributes. Damage, range, fire rate, reload, accuracy, and condition. The following gear was spotted in the shop. The bandolier increases ammo capacity by 50% for the long arm weapons while the gun belt does the same for side arms. The holster slows degradation of all weapons by 20%. The weapons wheel is back and almost all guns can be customized with engravings for grips and barrels or functionally by adding scopes, longer barrels and so on. Shooting reminded journalists of Max Payne 3 and weapons you carry are visible on Arthur at all times, two pistols, two rifles or a rifle and bow. There's also a hunting knife, the lasso and throwing weapons like knives. All other weapons and items are kept in the horse's saddle. Clearly, Arthur and his horse's inventories are different. While Arthur's is limited, his horse's isn't. In order to more realistically replicate the rhythm of shooting at that time, the fire button now has two functions. When you press it one time, it fires a bullet. When you press it a second time, you raise the gun's hammer or eject the rifle's shell. Arthur loads each bullet into the chamber one by one. Double tapping L1 makes him holster pistols with a flourish. For cartridge-based weapons, pressing or tightening the trigger again after firing will make Arthur push another cartridge into the barrel. Blind firing is an option too, you simply have to shoot without aiming first. Dead Eye ability is back too, and this time it has five different levels, from slowing down time to automatically or manually placing aim points to highlighting critical hit points on animals and NPCs with the option to dual wheel later on. At the highest levels, the Dead Eye system features limb dismemberment and vital organ targeting, allowing for some brutal and damn cool murders to kill cams only in hands. Hunting is going to be a really important part of the game, not only because you feed friends at camp, but also because it allows you to craft better items for yourself and fellow game members. Hunting is also a main source of income, other than heists and robberies, of course. Tons of new recipes and crafting options also appear in the game and unlock as you progress. Arthur can set up a personal camp for himself to cook food which he can either eat himself or feed to his horse. Loot from enemies and animals are used for crafting or those resources can be bought from stores. Red Dead Redemption 2 is home to around 200 species of animals, birds and fish, as opposed to a mere 38 in the first all of which behave and respond to their environment in unique ways. Deer, bison, and pronghorn traverse the plains in large herds. Scavengers sniff out carrion, salmon leap upstream, wolves and packs surround their prey to attack, and so on. According to these new images released by Rockstar, there's going to be an in-game zoological compendium of Earth's creatures that will fill up after encountering a new species. You can study animals by highlighting them with L2 and seeing information about them. The system is very useful and also works on humans, giving different information. It's kind of a predator instinct that will show you where your prey went and if your body odor is moving away or towards your prey. While stretching the bow, we can whistle to make your prey show his head and neck for a precision shot. Not hitting our prey in vital points makes it suffer, obliging us to finish it on the ground before proceeding to skin them and to load the carcasses onto our faithful steed. Unlike RDR1, skinning an animal shows the full grisly animation. You see the knife cut and the skin come off the body. Once skinning's done, Arthur has the animal's carcass at his feet with a small pelt and some glands in his inventory. Hunting missions for legendary animals are confirmed and the bow is the primary weapon to use. For example, crows are nearly worthless to hunt using a gun. After killing an animal, we can choose whether to skin it or collect it whole and load it on the back of our horse. Animals you killed and carried around will leave bloodstains on your shirt and if you skin them and place them on your horse, they will leave your horse's hide bloody. They'll also start to decay after a few in-game days. Like hunting, fishing also yields meat and useful materials. A range of species can be found in different habitats, each responding to different varieties of bait. All prey can be personally consumed, taken to camp and given to Pearson the cook or brought to general stores for money. Obviously, you can also sell pelts and other resources you may find in the game. General stores are packed with things to buy, including an impressive number of clothing options. So many, in fact, that you can go through a catalog on a shelf as if it were an actual book. Hats, vests, coats, boots, pants, and more are all for sale. You can even modify clothing by tucking your pants into your boots or rolling up your sleeves. 
Before closing this long video, we have to talk for a moment about Red Dead Online, the multiplayer title combined with Red Dead Redemption 2. The way GTA Online and GTA 5 are two different products for Rockstar games that use a common foundation, the same idea goes for the single player and multiplayer component of this new adventure. Red Dead Online is going to be an evolution of the classic multiplayer experience that will feature constant updates and adjustments that grow and will evolve the experience for all players. Due to their experience with the launch of GTA Online and the scale of that world, Red Dead Online is planned for a November 2018 launch as a public beta. The guys at IGN.com had the opportunity to interview the director of design at Rockstar North and the senior producer at Rockstar San Diego and ask some questions about the upcoming Red Dead Online. What we learned from the interview is that Red Dead Online follows the steps of the multiplayer component of Red Dead Redemption, giving players the entire world to play in both competitive and cooperative ways. The experience Rockstar gained with GTA Online will be directly poured into the creation and evolution of Red Dead Online. The heist update along with After Hours, the Doomsday Heist, Gun Running, and a few others represent the best of GTA Online and provided the template for what Rockstar is going to do with RD Online. Fear not, GTA Online isn't going anywhere, neither is the support going to detract from the modern day multiplayer title. The updates are staggered between both games, so that players will be able to switch between the two without having to choose one or the other. More about the game in the future is sure to come, maybe with, and this is just us talking, a gameplay series video focused on Red Dead Online like they did five years ago with GTA Online. And that's a wrap for this one. All links to the previews can be found in the description if you're interested in reading. There are still previews being released worldwide, but apart from specific experiences, most of what's been discovered is already in this video. Feel free to comment and report new details and info. At this point, we can't honestly say much about the game as we're still waiting on the next gameplay series video from Rockstar, but surely the closer we get to the release date, the more we'll know thanks to new trailers, reviews, and more. Red Dead Redemption 2 is coming for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One on October 26, 2018. And for those asking if a PC version will ever be available, as usual, Rockstar is ignoring the question. Just like they did for months about GTA 5 and almost every other title. While it could be available for PCs in the future, it's important to address the fact that the Red Dead series never had a PC title before, and that might unfortunately be the case for this third iteration. For all the new updates, keep following us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And if you want to chat with us, other players, and fans, join us on our official Discord server. For the GTA Series Videos crew, this was Gary7MT. See you next time.